Let us talk about PureRef. PureRef is a reference board. It is a virtual canvas on which you can drag and drop pictures, arrange them, annotate them, and keep them on top of your drawing application like Krita, Photoshop, whatever, while you are working. It is available for free on Windows, Mac, and Linux. You can name your price to give some money to the developers and support them, or you can set the price to zero and effectively download it for free. Let me fire it up. Okay, this is what it looks like. The way it works is you can drag and drop any picture or any amount of picture directly on the canvas and it will get loaded in PureRef. You can then rotate it, change its size, you can change its opacity, you can mirror it vertically or horizontally, you can focus the pictures like that, you can do all sorts of simple image manipulation operations. You can also change the look of the application, you can make it transparent so it can sit on top of your applications. You can see how I'm moving the canvas right now and you can even make it ignore mouse clicks so that it can sit on top of Krita and you can paint at the same time, which I'll show you at the end of the video. Let me show you what you can do as far as loading images is concerned. As I've shown you, you can drag and drop pictures directly on the canvas. That's one thing. You can also drag and drop any amount of pictures at the same time on the canvas and they get automatically arranged. But more importantly, what you can do is you can directly drag and drop a picture from your web browser and PureRef will download the image and it will store it inside of the PureRef file. That's a really cool thing you can do if you are browsing on Pinterest or on Google Images, like I'm doing right now. You can directly grab your pictures. One thing that's interesting to note is PureRef can work in two ways. We have to go to the settings to see that. There is a setting called Embed Local Images and Save File. When you activate that, any image you grab from your computer, like that, if I put those two inside of the PureRef file, they will be saved. The pixels will be saved inside of PureRef. That way you can grab your PureRef file and move it to another computer and you will be able to open it. Otherwise, if you deactivate this feature, every time you will load the file, PureRef will go to your hard drive, will try to find the images you linked and it will load them from the disk directly. So in that case, the PureRef file will be really small, but you won't be able to transfer them to one of your friend or to another computer. That's why in general, I recommend that you keep that option activated if you want this feature, if you want to be able to transfer your reference board. Okay, that's it as far as loading images is concerned. Now I'm gonna grab a few pictures to show you how to manipulate images. Let's now talk about navigation and manipulating images. Navigation is pretty simple. You can alt click to pan on the canvas and you can also use your middle mouse button. Then to zoom in and out, you can use the mouse wheel or you can press the Z key as in zoom and click and drag horizontally. Then Another way you can quickly zoom in on images is by pressing space. It will automatically toggle the zoom to fit on image. So if you press it once, it will zoom to the image. And if you press it a second time, it will zoom out of the image. You can also double click to achieve the same effect. When you are zoomed in on a picture, you can press the left and right arrows to zoom on the next image and you can press space again to zoom back on your whole canvas. There's one more thing you can do. You can right click and drag on your canvas to move it around on windows. And you can click on the sides, on the corners, or on the left, right, top and bottom lines of your PureRef instance to resize it. Next up is manipulating pictures. Quite simply, you can click and drag to move a picture around. You can shift click 
on pictures to add them to your selection. You can click and drag over multiple pictures to box select them, and you can then modify them all at once. Next, you can control click to rotate the image, and if you keep the shift key down, it will rotate by 45 degree increments. Next, if you shift, alt, click, and drag on your image, you will flip it horizontally if you click and drag uh, to the right or to the left. And if you drag to the top or to the bottom, you will flip it vertically. You can also control the image size by keeping the control and alt keys down and click and dragging like that. Same as with zooming, it's you have to click and drag horizontally. You can also control shift alt click and drag to change the opacity of the image. And obviously all the operations I've told you about, like rotation or scaling, you can apply them all at once to a selection instead of a single picture. There's one more thing you can do, it's packing. Uh, if you press Control shift p you will automatically pack all of the pictures based on their size. If I resize some pictures like that, I make this one really big, and I press Control shift p it will try to optimally pack the pictures inside of that rectangle based on the most prominent one and the smallest ones. Also, if you keep the C key down, C as in crop, and you click and drag, you can crop the image, which is really useful if, for instance, I just want this tower, I want to model it, and on another image, I want the full castle, you know, that way I can zoom in on that part of the picture and be like, okay, I'm gonna draw this part and I want to see all of the details. And in here, I want to see the big picture with the cliff and um, the vegetation around the castle to get a better sense of the whole scenery. And in here, maybe I want uh, to focus on the wall. So I'll crop it like that. Okay, that's a lot to take. Um, there's one last operation you can do that's really useful. If you press Control N, you will add a note to the file. A note is simply a bit of text, so I could say um, paint it in autumn, for example. And the note is linked to the picture I added it to. So when I move the picture, the note will move along with it. You can do the exact same operation on the note than you can do on the picture. So you can rotate, you can scale, you can flip the text as well. It's not really useful. It's only control alt click to scale, control click to rotate the note. This can be useful. And that's about it as far as manipulating pictures in PureRef. When you want to save, you just have to press control S and you will be able to save the scene as a PureRef file. I can name it Castle in that case. And the scene gets saved on my computer. You can see it's a pretty big file. It's four megabytes in that case. And whenever I double click on it, it fires a pure ref and I can access my pictures once again. How about using pure ref along with Krita? Let's check it out. I'm gonna load the last file. And let's say I wanted to sit on top of my painting here in Krita, but I want PureRef to stay on top and I want it to be transparent. To make it transparent, you just have to press Alt 3 and it will make uh, PureRef's background transparent and you will barely be able to see the lines to resize. If you press Alt 1 and Alt 2, you can um, load the dark and light color presets and Alt 3 is for the transparent one. If you right click, you have some options that pop up and you can go to the mode menu and you can make PureRef set always on top. That way, if I go back to Krita, PureRef will stay on top of it, even if I'm working full screen. That's one thing. And the next thing you can do is in mode, again, you can set pure ref to be transparent to the mouse. A warning box pops up and it will basically tell you that you can only unlock pure ref using the Ctrl T shortcut or by going down to pure ref 
and by clicking on the icons I'm going to show you. So now if I pan and if I try to click, you can see that even if I'm clicking on top of the Pure Ref window, it's only affecting Krita, not the Pure Ref app. So now if I want to unlock that, I have to go to the Pure Ref icon and click on the mouse icon to make it not transparent to mouse anymore. Okay, and the other way to do it is to use the Control T keyboard shortcut, as I'm doing in there. In general, I tend to leave a really small version of the window on the side, like that, especially if I have a vertical set of pictures. I try to leave them on the side, and I'll use the space key to navigate through my references, and um, I'll leave Pure Ref right here, and I'll just paint and work in Krita inside of that area on the right. Especially as with Krita, you can move the canvas around, so you can have it sit on the right of Pure Ref, which is not available in all painting applications. In Photoshop, if your document is smaller than the actual viewport, you can't move it to the right like that, and you can't zoom just the way you want. In Krita, you can. So yeah, that's about it, how I use Pure Ref with Krita. I invite you to check out the website for more information because there are a few more things you can do, which I don't use for the most part. You can change the key bindings here in the settings menu. You can access it by right clicking, going to settings, and you have a key bindings tab where you can find all of the functions available in Pure Ref and you can change them. You also have the presets, you can create your own color presets, and you have a few preferences that I invite you to read if you want to change some of the options in the application.